like say at the bottom of this intake right here, if you had a vacuum leak here or a vacuum leak here, those could cause a lean O2 code. Uh, this would be like an intake gasket right there. And this could be like a, a throttle plate gasket, which would be up here. So those, those items, any gaskets, vacuum lines, open vacuum lines, anything like that, this would actually cause a lean O2 code if you had this kind of a vacuum leak on this port and probably a misfire code. So you'd have two or three codes there. And somebody please tell me when I get to five minutes. So anyway, those are some different things right here that, that can cause those things. Also, and you see here, here's, this is a fuel injector. This is in the harness here. So these injectors that go in here on that fuel rail, if they get a plug filter or if the solenoid goes bad, they can stick open or shut. Either way, they can leak. They can cause lean or rich O2 codes. Any, any of these injectors can cause the same thing. Uh, this fuel pressure regulator, if the diaphragm gets a hole in it, before it caused a lean code because, because it was stuck shut, if it gets a hole in the diaphragm, it will actually pour fuel back through this vacuum line because it's got manifold vacuum going to it. It's, yeah, it's on there. It'll suck fuel through that diaphragm right out of the fuel rail back to the vacuum line and into this port. And it'll just run black smoke out the tailpipe. And, but what code are you gonna get? An O2 sensor code. Because these things are only smart enough to know what the individual sensor reads. They are not smart enough to know what's causing it. And that's the problem that most people make, because they don't understand that most of these codes are caused by something else. There's some other contributing factor in the system that causes that code to pop up. Um, let me see here. Uh, have we covered that? Oh. Okay, let's, let's go with some other things that can cause that. Say, for example, you've got a code for, you've got two or three codes. Say you've got a, this right here is coolant temp sensor in this intake. Here's your coolant temp sensor, your air charge temp sensor, uh, your thermostat right here, and of course your O2 sensor, which is on the board over here. So say you've got an O2 code and a, and a coolant temp sensor code. Well, you could change the coolant temp sensor, change your O2 sensor, and in the end, you drive it, and you could still have an O2 sensor code because maybe this little item right here is stuck open, your thermostat. So your thermostat can stick open and run cold all the time, which means it runs rich because the computer adjusts according to temperature. So if your thermostat's stuck open and your car's running cold all the time, it's always gonna be running rich because it thinks it's in a warm-up cycle and it's gonna run rich accordingly. So that can cause NO2 sensor code. Uh, a plug fuel line return. Say uh, the hose gets pinched because it's plastic after this and it gets pinched somehow and plugs that off. It raises your pressure. Higher pressure causes more fuel to come out the end of the injector. So that's another thing that can cause it. And this little jewel here, You've seen this before. This is a Cali converter. It can cause all, all kinds of undrivability problems. And I've seen these things actually, when I had a gas station, I saw I've, I had a customer drive in and they smelled something. It was at nighttime. And I saw this, it looked like a UFO coming into land. It was red <laughs> underneath the car. And I looked under there and it had two of these things and they were glowing bright red. They probably were 1200 degrees. So when they get that hot, what happens is you bake your plugs you fry your ignition wires, you can do all kinds of damage and it has a lot of different issues uh, and have all kinds of codes. Well, and oh, don't, let's not forget our mousy friends. They build a nest in your intake. They can cause some uh, drivability issues too. So I've got, kind of got to quit. This is a fuel pump, throttle plate, but I got to quit. So does anybody have any questions? Because we're running out of time. Yes? Yeah, they made the cars much more efficient. When I was in high school and we had a hot car, uh, they ran about 7, 8%, 4 to 8% CO. Now they're running 
0.015% CL. So when people tell you things haven't improved since the late 60s and 70s, they're nuts. That's why the United States has the lowest growth rate of emissions of any industrialized country in the world. Bill. So, so would you say that it's important for a customer to see the same picture from the same company for their maintenance? You bet. For example, um, this customer here, we know for a fact that uh, he's got going to have clean exhaust, clean intake ports, he's not going to be carboned up, he's going to have a tune-up. If he comes in with a check engine light on, we're going to know what's been done to his vehicle and he's just going to, we're going to be able to go right to what the problem is. We're not going to have to do the heat seek and destroy stuff that you do if you take your car and shop it around. So we can save you a lot of time in the weekends. Keep your weekends free so you can have fun and do what you want because we'll drive you to work, give you a loaner if you need it. And, uh, you know, allow you not to waste your time trying to figure all this stuff out. So uh, if you know what would be a good referral for me, it must be somebody that's getting to the point where they think their time is worth something. <laughs> and uh, they want to use it doing something else other than trying to figure out what's wrong with their car. So uh, send your friends with B&B, &B, we'll make their old car run uh, like it never did before. Thank you.